last one we just saw. Yeah, Ruins of Ceres is a massive map, so if it gets to cross spawns, we might see a real long game here, but we just have to wait and see once we get into this game. It can be a quick game too if they're both either sharing the right or the left. Main pushing very strong. Uh, aggressive play, definitely rewarded. Anyways, this is game number two. Beyond against Alive. In the upper left, in the red, our Terran player down one game. He is alive. In the upper right, in the blue, winning game number one, Beyond. A lot of support here in the audience for him today. A lot of support for both players, actually. And as we mentioned before, uh, before going into this game, uh, spawn points are quite critical uh, on this map. We see here they are spawning from each uh, across from each other, which means that the rush distances are very small. Well, relatively smaller. small for the map. Yeah, the smaller yeah, than this, this say, is still our biggest map, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, they're closer than they could have been. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they, it's it's if you're in the bottom left and they're in the upper right, I mean that's going to be a long game, and uh, a lot of expansions are going to be much more accessible to you. Yeah, because uh, with these spawn positions, they're going to be expanding southwards instead of uh, towards your opponent, right? Also, uh, it also changes the way that your army is moving because. Uh, you basically have to build a, uh, a line, I guess, down the map uh, once we get to that stage where, uh, if we do get to that stage, of course, where there's a lot of tanks, a lot of marines moving around because there's a lot of space to work with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we do see a lot of mass expanding uh, to the bottom here, uh, especially after the third base, and uh, it can make it a little bit of a funny game. There's a lot of different schools of thought on how to win. Uh, specifically in StarCraft 2 TBT, like, do you want to be pushing more towards the top or do you want to be sending drops down towards the bottom? Because as they expand further towards the bottom left, I mean, again, it is, even by drop, a very long distance to go. And, of course, with short travel distance by ground, a Terran player, even if you're dropping a lot at the bottom, they can just push towards you and go right for the heart of your production facilities. For sure. As we see here, the first deviation from both players, Alive's actually going for a quicker command center. Uh, and getting that factory behind that. Meanwhile, okay, sorry, uh, my mistake. Uh, both players getting that command center. Yeah, so far, Mirror yeah. builds here. Yeah. Um, although I can't say I'm surprised to see Alive at least trying to make sure he's got uh, an econ uh, balance or, and or lead here, especially considering how that last game went. It looks like Alive's actually opting to go for that uh, similar build that he did in the previous game where he gets that reacted barracks followed by getting a second <laughs> barracks. What is this? I think it's the three kings of Terran right now. So the three kings are uh, T.Y., Beyond, and Alive in his yeah, opinion. Yeah, I guess so. That's pretty funny. Um, well, uh, let's let's see uh, which of these two kings is going to come out on top now. I have to say, if Beyond wins game number two, I think actually he wins the whole series. I don't see Alive, as good as he is, a player that would then win 3-0, especially after how game number one looked. I mean, both players are pretty much doing the same exact build as they did in the previous game. Uh, Beyond opting to go for that early Hellion to supplement his initial push. Well, we do have we do have the Widow Mine tech here. Yeah, for Widow alive. Mine from Alive though. So there's oh. a, there's a change. Uh, I'm curious to see if he's just going to use that Widow Mine uh, as part of a drop harassment with the Medivac, or he's going to use it defensively. Yeah, it's Ooh. hard to say, right? Because oh my God, he didn't see that. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's quite key for Well, he's going to see everything see else. Units, that, though, that's going to so, make it very clear yeah. that the drop's coming towards him. Exactly. As we see, yeah, the Reaper's going <laughs> to... Well, there's SFVs flew a long time. Uh, yeah, those, uh, he's going to see that there's no units in the base of Alive. And i, I got to say, man, I'm kind of surprised that he's moving out with his drop after seeing that nothing's there. But the thing is, there's nothing here for Alive to defend as well because he's going to do his own counter drop. So no, that, that, That's what I'm saying is that uh, I'm surprised that Alive is actually going to do his own drop while he knows that Beyond is dropping him here. Well, Let's well, see how much damage he actually takes. Yeah, we'll see how much damage he'll do with this. The SFV is actually uh, supplementing this uh, Cyclone quite well. And Oh, there's a Cyclone here for the Viking as well. Takes out that Medivac. That is a huge win there for Beyond. 
All those units did not come out for a live, which is real unfortunate. Yeah, and uh, frankly, the amount of damage done on the ground here, uh, you know, for uh, Beyond, Beyond it actually suffered very little losses. Uh, Alive did lose the Cyclone, but that's not actually that important because the Cyclone is sort of phased out of the game later on. Yeah, the Cyclone is only there to serve one purpose, and it's to basically deflect the initial Medivac harass that comes around. So you don't really want to be building Cyclones into your army composition in Terran versus Terran especially. Yeah. As uh, you, we saw that reaction there from Live, he knew that he didn't do enough damage to uh, get himself back into the game. And we see there in the supply count, it's a roughly 10 supply lead here for Bjorn as he is uh, building his third command center as well. And looks like he's going to take his third sometime soon. All right, the uh, the Cyclone uh, is just going to come out here and scout. And that's actually very smart by Bjorn because as we were saying uh, earlier, this unit doesn't have a lot of functionality later on in the game. So just bringing him out here now. Uh, is probably best to try to keep map control. Control that tower especially, which is one of the most important parts to have um, control over in this game so that you can at least see, you know, what might be coming as far as big pushes go. Once again, this game looking a bit similar to the game we saw uh, in game number one here. Beyond a head in supply seems to have more potential to move out on the map. Yeah, it feels like we're having a deja vu right now because Alive, his harassment uh, move earlier didn't really do that much damage. He's really late taking his third base. And he's just playing catch up right now. And we might see the same thing that we saw in the first game where Beyond just hits a timing where he builds more units, stand alive, and pushes in and takes the game. I, I am curious about, in this case, the third base, because I feel like uh, for Alive, he might end up getting punished here for that as well. Uh, now, it doesn't seem like Alive was very uh, hungry to get a lot of Vikings out right away, so these tanks can pretty much uh, attack with impunity here. Oh, if he sniped that tank, that would be a huge win for him, but it looks like this Viking's just uh, going to give him vision. And Oh, it actually loses his tank there. That's really a uh, bad control there from Live. Big plays here. The Cyclone needs to come up here to help Predator Ben. Nicely done. And good control. He needs to wait uh, and, and drop the tanks in between the other tank volleys. Cyclone actually did a nice job there, taking out that uh, Viking of Alive, so it means that he has one less... But this uh, Viking here from Alive is actually going to take out that mid back. It's, uh... I, I gotta say, a little bit too greedy there from Beyond. Yeah, he should have He was doing a good there. job, but I mean, the, the Vikings were inevitable. Yeah. They, were, they were going to come this game. Exactly. Uh, this tank is also going to die as well. Uh, I'm surprised that he didn't actually get that out, in the, out of the way of that third base. But hey, right. I want to point out too, look at the uh, upgrades coming here from Beyond. He's going to have 1-1, one, one, like way ahead of his opponent. Yeah. And I think that is going to allow him to, to punt the third base back up. Uh, that uh, orbital is going to have to go back up onto the uh, into the second base area. Yeah, despite the fact that uh, Bjorn did lose those two tanks in a tank evac drop, if we look at the unit count here, uh, it's only 2-2, two to two, but the thing is, Bjorn has uh, those uh, he's further ahead in upgrades uh, progress-wise, so if he hits that plus one timing before Alive gets his plus one timing, he's going to win a straight-up fight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think this might just come down to the upgrades here. Again, supply is still uh, totally fine right now for um, Bjorn. Uh, not, not such a massive lead that uh, there's no way Alive can stop it, but certainly enough where Alive certainly can't make any more mistakes. Oh, he's going to see this drop here at that uh, uh -oh. middle right, and it is, I think it's going to uh, get to drop this, uh, or the Marines there. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he wants to try to come around. Now, even though he takes control of that tower, it's also a pretty big tell that he wants to do something over here to the bottom part of the map, and oh my god, these Vikings are doing a great job chasing out those tanks. Yeah, Alive's just recessing the situation right now. His drop, double drop with the Medivac has failed because Bjorn has scouted that, and this, <laughs> I love this Marine here, just chipping away the Medivac. Uh, sees completely where those Medivacs are going, kind of uh, giving him a lot of intel into Alive's army movement so okay, far. So he's outmaneuvered Alive so far, and this is going to be the opportunity for Beyond to potentially seize the game here with this next attack. Again, it'll also depend on how well Alive can control and gather intel. Uh, slowly but surely, Beyond is pushing forward here. He has to keep reinventing his movement as he gets further across the map every time he's spotted. Yeah, the most important thing about uh, Beyond's army movement right now is taking control of that watchtower in the middle of the map because taking that watchtower means he can see a uh, bulk of that north area of uh, Ruins of Ceres and taking control of that watchtower means it limits the army movement capabilities of Live if he doesn't want to be detected. 
All right, he's going to come in over here now. He could land. Oh, nice spot there. Lucky spot, I guess you could say, by Bjorn. Bjorn's prepared uh, for this. He might, be, uh, yeah, he might be fished in here by trying to get these engineering bays and SCVs over here. But the Marines come up and begin to drive out these medevacs. He's going to send the Vikings there, and Alive has to get out of there quickly or else he's going to lose those I medevacs. don't even think he can, man. He's going to have to fly into another map, man. This is just really bad news. And um, with the Marines coming over here, oh, my God, I guess they can't get over there in time, and the drop continues. Oh, we'll see how much damage this drop does from Alive, but oh, he has to pick up there, those Marines, reflecting that uh, many backdrop of those Marines from Alive. And it looks like we see a counter drop here from Young. Let's see how much damage it does. They drop down here now, stimming and hitting all these SCVs. Uh, Alive does come in here. Finally, the medevacs are taken out there. This should trigger the push right now. By the way, Pia nearing maxing out a good amount of minerals and gas there to keep oh. remaking his units and these Marines taking huge hits. Beyond moves in. Uh, the tanks immediately are scooped up and moved back, but it seems like Beyond just has too much of an army. What a poor split second decision there from Alive, moving those Marines forward. That was completely unnecessary. And with all those Marines gone from Alive, Beyond could just easily push uh, in with these tanks. Uh, another harass comes up over here with a small number of Marines. It looks like he wants to pick up these tanks and try to move them forward here. I think a, a life just has not that many units now. Look at how many Marines that Gunnish is producing here from his barracks. And this uh, harassment takes out eight SAVs, but it might not be enough. If we look at the unit count here right now, there is nine tanks for Bjorn in, uh, compared to Lies 5, and that is a lot of a differential there. And also, I think it's going to be very easy for Bjorn to make another expansion here while this is going on. He actually has more than enough minerals to do that right now if he wants to. Um, Again, Alive barely hanging on to this third base. It's getting pretty dicey. The fact that he's even thinking about picking up and moving is a little bit scary. He scan sees the entire army, and he's going to probably try to drop right over here in the center of this scan. At this point, I think Bjorn's just trying to figure out where the best position he can land his tanks are uh, for this uh, battle that he's looking to fight here. Uh, okay, I think he's going to try to drop his medevacs on top of the tanks, and then as they're being picked up, he comes in again. But let's see, another boost! Oh, uh, nice positioning here on the tanks. Could play the catch the life off guard here, even with that sensor tower. And, oh, oh. there's actually a huge amount of Marines here. I might do another nice counter-attack, but he has to do damage with those Marines oh, here. Oh, big plays here, coming down and dropping. Out of range of that siege tank, stimming. Doing a lot of damage, meanwhile, uh, Alive is coming in right now to try to kill off all these SCVs and possibly this command center. If he takes out this command center, this will allow life back to the game because uh, Bjorn needs to keep that... Okay, he loses that command center, but 2-2 two, two upgrades up finish alive life as well, but oh, Bjorn is doing a nice job out multitasking alive here. Pretty scrappy game right now. Uh, however, neither player can, has a functional third base. In fact, I believe the main command center is going to have to land over here uh, into where the third base will be. And uh, unfortunately, I, it's pretty apparent that Bjorn has a much better stranglehold on this position um, for third bases than Alive does. So I, I think it's going to be a real uphill battle for Alive to actually reclaim that third base, whereas uh, Bjorn has already dropped his command center there and is now dishing out some SCVs. Well, catches these Marines off guard. That is a huge loss there from Alive. He needs as many units as he can right now to try and defend from this push outside of his uh, choke point uh, from Bjorn. You know, Alive also, there's a command center going down there. He can't actually get SCVs over there. Maybe the ones that are actually not mining here, but anything else, that's going to be pretty tough. Yeah. As we see, the, <laughs> that orbitals, uh, orbital command center is actually going to be uh, shelled down by those tanks there in place. But beyond, it looks like Alive's trying to break through here with these uh, medivac drops. All right, nice pickup there, getting out just in time. Beyond still winning in the supply game. We have a squad of Marines coming down here now to try to finish up uh, what's remaining of this command center. Looks like he's going to get there right before... I think that was going to be a planetary, I'm not sure, but he's going to get there right before. There's no way that can be saved now in time. Yeah, nice win there from Bjorn. Scouting that hidden, or you could say hidden, but uh, fourth base, I guess, of Alive. Is, looks like Bjorn is actually posturing for a nice drop there in that nook at the uh, between the second and third base. It's doing a bit of damage right now so far. Is he in range of that tank? Can that tank hit the other tank? I'm not sure. I guess uh, not, yeah, actually. Not sure. But uh, this is a nice drop here with those Marines as well, so... Okay, he's going to try to come up here now. Oh, Already another big army down here. He's slowly pulling the tanks back up here to the second, and that should give him the kill move here at the third. Yeah, I think this is just way too many uh, tanks here from Bjorn. If I look at the unit count, it is 16 tanks to 8. That is pretty much double tank count. And when 
Nowhere to run, nowhere to mine. Uh, Alive is now out of bases. And I think if we don't see him pull a rabbit out of his hat right now, this is going to be GG. Yeah, we've got a really scrappy game here so far in Real Deceros. And in scrappy situations like this, having the larger tank count helps so much uh, when you're fighting against each other. And it looks like at this point, Bjorn can just ferry units into the main of Alive, and Alive can't really do anything about it because he doesn't really have the tank count to deal with it. Wow, this, this command center nearly burning down. He doesn't even have the funds to actually repair that entirely. Another drop over here. Marines getting shredded, but the tanks might grow back. Beautiful play. And what this is doesn't give him any positional lead. GG. Bjorn wins game number two. As uh, Bjorn is ahead 2-0 here in our losers uh, semi-final. It's going to be a large climb for Life to get back into the series. It is. Um, Bion is just looking to be the more muscular Terran, the more um, his play really elastic, right? He's very much able to have these pushes that can always come into the right spot at the right time. He's always ahead of uh, Alive. Yeah, it, it seems like from start to finish, he's just a stronger Terran player. Yeah, it's obvious that it seems that Alive is struggling to deal with uh, Beyond's aggression here so far because it seems that Beyond has always taken the initiative in these last two games. And also, uh, we've seen pretty much the same build orders from both players, and Beyond has been coming out ahead so far in both games. We're going to go to a five-minute break. When we come back, we go to game number three with Alive versus Beyond. Stay tuned.